This is a chapter 15 fluid motion problem. Like any problem, we want to read through it, try and jot down the relevant information in a diagram to help conceptualize the problem. And this problem comes in the form of a question. Can an emergency exit window be opened mid-flight? We're given some information about the window. It's 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So if I draw that, that's really gonna be a square. And we're told that the uh, inside of the cabin uh, is at a pressure of 0.75 atmospheres. So that's the pressure inside the plane, 0.75 atmospheres and we're told that the pressure at altitude is equal to 0.25 atmospheres. Pressure outside the plane is less than the pressure inside the plane. And so what we want to consider here is that in order to open the window, we need to pull on it. Uh, why do we need to pull on it? Why not push on it? Well, let's have a look at the forces which are exerted by these pressures. Remember that our definition of pressure is equal to force per unit area. So the pressure of the gas inside the plane is going to exert a force. Now that force is going to be just equal to the pressure multiplied by the area. So in fact, I can draw a pushing force from the pressure inside the plane. Remember, push it on the window. Uh, so that's, uh, we'll call that one F1. And uh, there's also going to be a force coming from the air outside, pushing on the window as well, force F2. And if I look at the relative, because it's the same area, if I look at those relative pressures, I can see that the force F2 is going to be one third of the force F1. Uh, now by Newton's second law, you're automatically saying, well, my window should be accelerating to the left. So there must be another force involved here in order for the net force to be zero. And where does that force come from? Well, it actually comes from the way that the windows are constructed. So the, the simplest way to think about this is that the uh, window sits with the exterior of the uh, aluminium frame just covering the window. In fact, I might want to draw this side on. So here's my aluminium frame from my plane and my window sits uh, like this. Uh, now I'm going to ignore the fact that there's a, you know, maybe glue or something in there. But what's that going to do? Well, that's going to exert a normal force. The uh, force F1 is larger than F2. It pushes the window against the frame and there's going to be a normal force uh, which is going to be exerted against the window as well. And of course, that normal force is going to be have to equal to uh, two thirds the size of F1. One. By opening the window, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the window and we're going to pull on it. And so if we pull it in inside, then what we're going to do is adding an extra force on. That's going to uh, reduce the normal force. Okay, that normal force will get smaller and smaller until eventually the force that we're applying is the same as what the normal force was. And that would mean that the net force is now zero and the window should just, just, should just come off. So what we really care about is finding out the magnitude of what this normal force is. Okay, that's going to be the, the same the force we have to apply to pull the window uh, inside. So I think I've already given uh, a hint as to how we're going to do that. Uh, well, we know that this here is going to be the difference between those two forces, F1 and F2. So why don't we just find out what the magnitudes of those things are, and then we can take them away. Uh, so the force F1 is going to be given by the pressure at atmosphere. Uh, now, uh, just to remind us, of course, that uh, the SI units of pressure are 1 pascal. That's equal to 1 newton per meter squared. So if I want to get the force in SI units of newtons, I need my pressure in pascals and my area in meters squared. So uh, the pressure of the plane is 0.75 atmospheres. To convert that to pascals, I need to recognize that 1 atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals, or by 10 to the 3. Uh, puts it in pascals. And then we need to multiply that by the area, which is 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters, okay, so 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. If you throw those into a calculator, then you end up with a number which is around about 19 kilonewtons, and you can check that if you like. That's going to be F1. Uh, what's F2? Well, that's going to be the same equation except this pressure here, rather than being 0.75 is 0.25, but I already know that's one third of, uh, of uh, 0.75, so I can write that as one third times 19 kilonewtons, and that's approximately 6.3 kilonewtons. So you can check these numbers yourself. Uh, that means, of course, that the force that we have to apply uh, is equal to the difference between those two. The force that we need to apply to open the window is going to be equal to that uh, 19 kilonewtons minus 6.3 kilonewtons, and that's approximately 12.7, there we go, kilonewtons. So the question is, can you open this window? Well, uh, can you apply a 12.7 kilonewton force? Uh, now you might ask yourself, well, I'm not quite sure. How do I know what a kilonewton is? Well, let's have a think about this in terms of a weight. Okay, so this weight is the same as force. So what, what mass weighs 12.7 kilonewtons? Well, the mass that weighs 12.7 kilonewtons is going to be 12.7 kilonewtons divided by 9.8. That would be approximately 1.3 uh, 
tons. So if you can lift 1.3 tons, that's great. Uh, we'll call you the Incredible Hulk. Uh, but uh, it basically means that windows in planes are inherently safe because you can't uh, apply that force. Uh, in fact, this also, conversely, you turn this around, this is why um, you only get little windows in planes. Why don't you get that panoramic uh, view or a meter by a meter? It'd be so nice to look out the window. Um, it's because the force uh, that the internal air pressure uh, would exert would end up being extremely large as an area increases, that force goes up, and eventually that will just break the window.